Hi, I'm Phil. Welcome to the very last episode of PGC. To be filmed in my 20s. So, done some reflecting, thought about what have I learned in my 20s? Well, one thing I've learned is that if you drink a whole bunch of different kinds of alcohol, you're not gonna feel very good the next day. So, before the show, I had a glass of white wine. It was bubbly. A dry aged cider. And now I'm gonna move on to an IPA. This one's the Gamma Bomb from Warped Wing. We went there with the cool guys like John Haggerty and Kyle O'Brien. Here it is. I think I already tried it, but now I'm gonna try it again. Look at that, heady pour. That German guy should be happy. <sighs> now you got a little something on your mouth, just give it a dab. Dainty. Tonight we're gonna teach you how to make leftover brisket chili. Hey, it's not brisket chili, it's leftover. <laughs> what could be better than just making some bullshit recipe with shit I got in my fridge as the last episode of my twins. Now, you may be with me wondering, faithful viewer, when the hell do you ever make brisket? Well, I'll tell you, I've made brisket plenty of times. And this was, in fact, the worst brisket I ever made. Still tasted really good, but it was just, on the whole, not what I wanted it to be. But that's okay, no big deal. And the, uh, the astute observers will realize that's not all brisket, there's also a chicken wing in here. That one is a snack. A brisket is a big old cut of beef. It's a beautiful cut of meat and it's like one of the uh, holy cuts of barbecue because you can smoke it for a really long time and make it taste great. You can see here I just got like a lot of fat. There's some meat in there. So we're gonna salvage this and do another meal. All right, so here's our brisket. We'll set that aside for now. And we'll start this recipe with some vegetables. So like any good cooking, it starts with an onion. It's a big old yellow onion. And honestly, I don't make chili that often. And when I do, it's usually just an excuse to eat a big old pile of meat. So here I go chopping this onion using a proper technique that I also learned in my 20s. Took me a couple of years of making cooking videos to finally get it down, but I turned around and chopped an onion now. And the dice size is, is your preference. I don't have a real big preference, so I'm just chopping this up. As it were, I don't know if I've ever told this story before, but right now I'm making little ones out of big ones. Just something my father used to tell me to go do. And he was referencing prison work in which old Prisoners used to just like beat the shit out of rocks with hammers all day. You know, you've seen those cartoons, right? I don't know why he told us to go out in the yard and do that, but we took it literally once. We started hitting some like lawn rocks with baseball bats and uh, we beat the, really f***ed up the baseball bats. And then my dad got mad. But <laughs> in response, we were like, well, we were just making little ones out of big ones. <laughs> so I'm chopping this onion still, and I'm still chopping it. I'm probably gonna be chopping it till it's done. Okay, now you got two options. Actually, you got infinite options, but for this, this porpoise, you could do one pot chili, or you could cook your shit in a pan. And I, I think for filming purposes, I'm gonna cook it in a pan. All right, we're gonna heat up our pan here, like medium-ish heat, and we're gonna start cooking those onies I don't even really need it to heat up. We're gonna throw them in there. Some olive oil. Olive oil? Now, I, I haven't learned that much from filming pretty good cooking episodes through half of my 20s, but uh, one thing I have learned from observational learning on the YouTube is if you yell things, it might be funny. And that's why I yelled olive oil. And in case you're wondering, since this is a super special episode, I'm gonna try to be a little sillier today. Not to say that it's gonna be contrived, but I'm kind of okay if I don't feel good tomorrow. <laughs> I ain't got no meetings on the calendar. <laughs> All right, I got some chilies, and because we are cooking for people with sensitive palates, not everyone here is a spicy mama. So we're trying to make this chili inclusive. This is a poblana. This is a cubanelle. This is a hatch chili. We chopped off the tops. You could de-seed these so as not to muddy your chili with seeds. But what the f does it matter? Like you're throwing so much shit in the chili. What does it matter? If there's seeds, is anyone gonna even know? I don't think it matters. All right, there's our chili base. And now it's actual chili, because we put chilies in it. Here's some homegrown garlic. Okay, I'm gonna put one clove of homegrown garlic. 
crushed. This is a big ass clove. This is actually the biggest clove from the, the shit. And you can see there's some there's some fucky stuff in there. You see that? That's f Okay, there's the homegrown garlic. And I might throw some pre minced in there too, just for shits and giggles. Would it be my recipe if I didn't throw pre minced garlic? Okay, I'm actually, I think I'm gonna cook in both of these pots. So let's get this other pot heated up. All right, and that, so for health, for health, we're gonna get some of that brisket fat. Look at that brisket fat, that's this is fat. Fat penis. Look at that, pure fat, no ketchup. So I'm gonna cut that like so, into smallish pieces. Kind of, kind of cube it up. And I'm hoping to have a similar effect to like cooking off some bacon. But bacon's basically just fat with a little bit of belly meat, anecdotally. Okay, and I'm gonna throw that in a pot. And because we're trying to live a long, healthy life well beyond our 20s, put some oil in there too. Olive oil. Olive oil. Man, those onions are already looking nice. People who don't like onions can f off. John got mad at me because I salted the onions off camera. <laughs> But here, there's evidence, there's the salt. There it is. Can't get away with anything on this show. John's dedicated to filming every moment of excellence. John's an investigative journalist. And he just wants more pictures of Spider-Man. All right, well, how's our beef fat doing? Smells good. All right, what else could we do? I want those onions to get more cooked. That popping is scaring me. You ever like put a bunch of different alcohols in your belly and like shake it up? I've never done that. Never before tonight. All right, here's my peppers and garlic. I'm gonna put them in this pan with these onions. I want those cooked, just like that. Okay, so I'm, I'm not sure. I, I'm pretty sure that I don't have enough brisket for this to be as meaty as I would like. So I got this half a leftover steak. It's a little bit old and smells fine, but I'm not gonna suggest that anyone smells it. Finely aged. It's fine. We're gonna cook the fucking shit out of it. This is gonna be so fully cooked, you're not even gonna know. This is just a bite-sized pieces, okay? So we're gonna throw it in there. Let it cook off. This is the first step of making sure that any organisms that are on the beef are killed off. And we're back. All right, so here's my pile of leftover brisket. You know, we're just gonna chop it into bite-sized pieces. And if some of it's fat, you know, that, that's not that different from regular brisket. <laughs> yeah, that brisket, it's like 50% fat. Throw that in the pot. All right, so now we got beef and brisket. Stir it up. Okay. And these sheets are looking good too, so we're gonna pop those in there. Some of these are more cooked than others, that's okay. Because it's chilly, it's gonna cook a while. All right, so I'll just pop that in there. So you scrape the pan. <coughs> Here's that pre minced garlic, throwing it in. Why are we throwing that in? Because we can. All right, this is an important step. Crank that heat as high as the heat can go. And you got that spoon, you vigorously stir the chili. It's not chili yet. Right now it's just beef and peppers, okay? Crack a cold one. This one's war another warped wing beer. Why do we keep featuring this? Because they gave us the time of day and now we love them. This one's called Flyer Red American Lager. I tried this one at the brewery. Tastes fine. I'm pretty sure we cooked with this too. Yeah, they cook with this, so we do too. That's what they use in their beer cheese, which, little, little hot critique. Hot critique, that beer cheese needs salt. Whoop, Twing, if you watch this, put some fing salt in your beer cheese. <laughs> All right, you got that hot beef? Oh, god damn, look at that. Look at that. Can you see that? All right, so now you put in the beer. Onewholebeer.com. Now wait. It gets crazier. We're gonna add coffee. Look at this. This is coffee from yesterday. Woo, there it is. Beer and coffee. If you wanna skip that step, you can just add a coffee beer. All right, more flavor. We can season it now, okay? This one, no, not that one. This one is the, the rest of this organic chili powder. There's like nothing in there. I got this six chili powder. What six chilies is it? So anybody's guess, it's not labeled. Chili powder is how chili tastes like chili. It's literally named for the chili powder. All right, cumin. I feel like this bottle of cumin will last forever because no fucking cumin comes out when you shake it. Here's paprika. If you don't call it paprika, people won't think you're funny on YouTube. All right, now here's my crazy, another crazy twist. We're just experimenting with flavors. I'm adding juniper berries. Why? Because I like juniper berries. <laughs> Let's give it a stir. At this point, it smells like chili. It's a good sign. All right, here's the spiciest thing we're gonna throw in. It's a chili in adobo. 
Bloop. We put in some of that sauce. Don't put in too much, otherwise John can't eat it. All right, here we have the black beans. And you may be asking, are we gonna get rid of that fart juice? And the answer is no, not in the chili. Little do people know that chili is just an excuse to fart. Here's the red beans. These are the kidney beans. They're called kidney beans because they're shaped like children's knees. All right, there they are. Now it's time to add the tomato products. I'm gonna start with some petite diced tomatoes. I picked petite diced because who wants a big honking piece of tomato other than me? That's right, it's only me. There they are, and in they go. I'm also gonna add some heirloom vine ripened tomato sauce. I specifically bought this because it was on clearance and I thought it was funny. I think this is might actually be spaghetti sauce. It tastes pretty good and I thought it was just sauce but hey, guess what? There's big old chunks of tomato in there. All right, working our way through the world of cans, we're also gonna add a little can of Hatch green chilies. These are more like canned pickly peppers. That's gonna give it some of that je ne sais quoi. Or as the, uh, the Mexicans say, who would actually be making this chili, no entiendo. Tastes great. Get everything out of there. Now in this moment, I'm realizing maybe I didn't need this big of a pot. Look at all this room we got for activities. I'm putting more beans in it because I found out not everyone likes beans here. So I want to enhance my experience at their expense. This is an orange pepper. I put it in because I just want more chili. Looks good and great. Everything's fully cooked so we could potentially taste this for, for flavor. Excuse me, we're filming an episode. If you could just talk at like a hushed volume. That was a crushed volume. <laughs> it's not as spicy. It's definitely gonna need some salt. So let's just throw some in now. And some pepper. You talking about World War One or no, two? two? What the f All right, we'll be back again with chili. Okay, we got our chili at a nice simmer here. You see that? It's a, a simmering chili. We're just gonna let that go for a while. Uncovered for now. If we feel like we gotta cover it, we'll do that later. But just let it go. Go do other things. We're gonna go do other things. Be back after we do those other things. Okay, our chili's been going. Check it out, it's chili. Now listen, we're gonna put toppings on this chili. You know what I got from that store? I got that value cheddar. I saw that value cheddar, it was $2, you know, I had to have it. Nothing I like more than a good value. As I close the door on my 20s and think about solidifying my political views, it can be all summed up with it's nothing I like more than a good value. And you faithful viewer, hi Kayla. What, what are you doing over there? Watching the show. Okay. You faithful viewer. Oh, ye of little faith. You who are like, man, I wish Phil still got drunk on the show. Psst, I'm a little drunk. You who are like, man, I wish that Phil, fill in the blank. I don't know, what else did I used to do on the show? I don't know. But yet there's another group who was like, that Phil was a wholesome boy who used to wear a cheese hat. Tonight is the night. I'm gonna shred that cheddar for your pleasure. Do -do. <laughs> what could be better than putting a value cheddar through a cheese grater? Valuecheddar.com. All the words of an onion in a cheese grater. Com. Now do you need to shred the whole block? No, no you don't. But are you going to? You are, you are. And in fact, one way of showing reverence for showing a very special episode is to transition into using the second person and a new cadence and a new style of talking. You think about the cheese, you fill up the grater once, there it is, but you gotta fill it up some more. You think about all the times you've used this voice before and how sometimes you, you read things that John Turco wrote in this same voice and it's about colors and auras and you think about does that apply to my life do i have the pink aura no i don't i have i think the green aura or the red aura i can't remember but there it is you're still thinking about how you might shave off your thumb if you just get too close to that cheese but there it is that's the last of the cheese and you eat it and it tastes great and there it is two dollars worth of value cheddar you look in your fridge hoping to find an old onion and there it is it's ancient. It's not even half an onion. It's maybe a fifth. Is a fifth used for anything standard? Yeah, liquor. You rinse off the old onion. You take the onion and you cut off the old piece. And your friends don't know how old that onion is. 
is. You take the onion and you chop it into bite-sized toppings. Everything you've learned about chopping onions is irrelevant because you're in the zone. You're wearing a cheese hat. You don't care how those onions turn out. In fact, you already know they're gonna be bad onions. You take the shitty extras and you throw them in the sink. That's enough onions for one person. You bought sour cream for the, uh, for, for the chili. You bought the organic kind. Why? Because it was the same price as any other kind and you assumed maybe it'll be better. Since it says supernatural, it was the same price. It's not any different. You know, you know. And there the chili is. There the chili is. Let's look at it together. There it is. It's not as much as you expected. Just like your 20s. It's not as much. It kind of went by quick. You don't remember all of it. But it looks just fine. It's gonna make a fine Meal. You look for a bowl and you realize you have so many bowls. How did you get so many bowls? Some of them were gifts, some of them you bought, and all of them are dirty in the dishwasher. So let's scoop up some chili. What does it taste like? Well, I ask you, what does it matter? Because you're going to eat it anyways. Especially if you're a guest of the show. You have no control over how it tastes. You're just on Phil's wild ride, and eventually you're going to eat the shit that he serves. And there it is, the chili. Are you going to taste it before adding condiments? No. There's some onions, not very well chopped. Here's a preposterous amount of cheese. <laughs> you feel fine about the amount of cheese you've added because you lived in Cincinnati for a while. And there's a great tradition of there of adding a preposterous amount of cheese to chili. Here's that organic sour cream. What does it matter? It doesn't. And you mix it up. And there you are. It's the end of the episode. Will the horns play? Will the taste test be good? Honestly, with the inputs, it can't be that bad. It tastes pretty good. It's not great, but you didn't expect it to be great. And here, for the first time ever in an episode, is other people trying this food. But they all have to wear the cheese hat. Mm, that's really good. Mm, that's delicious. Oh, that's good. Mm. It just tastes like a fatty chili. <laughs> that's what it tastes like. It's good. You can make this. It tastes great. That's how you do it. If we're still doing this show by the time I'm 40, holy shit. <laughs>